The breathtaking Arctic scenery is almost endless on the world's largest island. The ice cap, up to three kilometers thick, covers an area 14 times the size of England. If Greenland's ice were to melt, the oceans would rise up to seven meters. As a neighbor to the North Pole, Greenland has an Arctic climate, and the edges of the inland ice experience frequent hurricanes and snowstorms. The Inuit, Greenland's indigenous people, share a common language and culture. With a total population of only 55,000, you are truly on your own as soon as you leave one of the small towns or settlements. Imagine that only East Greenland extends over 1.451,000 square kilometers. Less than 3,500 people live scattered among two towns and nine settlements in an area bigger than Great Britain, Germany, France, and Italy put together. Each East Greenlander, therefore, has an area three times larger than Liechtenstein to himself. Human civilization is the exception in this country. The mountains, valleys, fjords, and gigantic ice cap are practically virgin land. Thomas Bayran from Germany and his team, Mike Korienik from Switzerland, two of the world's most experienced divers, started their journey from Hamburg, Germany to Reykjavik, Iceland. And then they continued to Kulusuk Airport on the east coast of Greenland. Every single piece of our equipment is essential for the mission. So in places like here, where there is no proper handling of the luggage, you have to make sure yourself that everything comes with. For Thomas and Mike, there is only one alternative to reach their final destination, Kumut, a settlement south of the airport. They must make two flights in two days by helicopter. This is only possible in Kulusu. Yeah, I'm only for Germans. <laughs> When I first saw Greenland, many thoughts were running through my head. I mean, Greenland is the largest of all islands and most of the time it's fully covered in snow and ice. I think whoever sees this land first will certainly have one feeling. It's uh, respect. It was essential to work together with the people of Kumiut. From the very beginning I knew that I won't find the shark without their help. About 400 of them are living here in Kumiut. They have electricity and TV, but don't have a proper water supply. Moving equipment here is a problem too, because there are no roads. Your only chance is the dog sledge. To film in these waters, you need really extreme gear. My dry suit gives me about 20 to 30 minutes before I feel like, you know, being in a deep freezer. But this benefit comes with a high price. It adds another 20 kilogram to my equipment um, because I need much more lead to sink. Imagine you move like a robot underwater. It really is a tough job and after about two dives a day, you're really done. But if your passion is just big enough, you can easily overcome these problems. Mike has over 30 years experience with diving. He's not only my still photographer, he's also some sort of life insurance to me. You need to have a partner to rely on.
You know, I, I always dreamed about filming the Greenland shark. So very little known about this creature. What we know is from fishermen. We know that they live in ice cold regions and uh, we know that they can get really big. I mean really big. They can get bigger than even the great white shark. So I'm always looking for a challenge in filming and in this case very little footage exists on the Greenland shark. So I wanted to be the first to cover this. But of course there must be a reason that nobody could film it before. Thomas and Mike have made eight dives trying to find the Greenland shark. Sometimes you find one easily, but most often it takes several attempts to find one. Okay. Oh. We often think of sharks living in warm or tropical waters. Of the 465 known species of sharks, only eight have been seen in Arctic waters. As one of the largest sharks in the world, it rivals the great white in size, growing to over 6.5 meters in length and weighing up to 1,000 kilos the Greenland shark is the largest Arctic fish. Sigurdur Pettersson is an Icelandic fisherman who lives here as long as he can remember. No one else has such intense knowledge about the shark. He's still catching the fish in the traditional I mean, like the Inuits do it since thousands of years. And his catch is only for his own needs and the needs of the people of Kumiut. Some sharks live to be over 100 years old and virtually all species of sharks are known to have an extraordinary resistance to infections and to the growth of tumors. Scientists have proven that it is the oil from the shark's liver that contains algaglycerols, which is the primary source of its incredible immunity. The liver of the Greenland shark accounts for up to one-third of the shark's size and weight and can yield up to 100 gallons of oil, containing 30% algaglycerols within the oil. Siggy, what's what's with uh, the teeth? I, I believe most of the of the of the people believe that a shark from this size must have enormous big teeth yeah. in order to to eat his prey. But this this shark here has just tiny tiny teeth. Yeah. So how is he eating? When, when my, when the Greenland shark has teeth that are relatively small but razor sharp, and it feeds on fish, seals, beluga whale, and narwhal carcasses and sometimes each other. And, and where do you find them? Yeah, over there, over in the knee. Aha, okay, can you bring us to this place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, let's go. go. Greenland sharks are sluggish compared to the great white. Cruising the frigid waters beneath the ice, they hunt in near darkness and use their keen sense of smell to find food. The darkness is not a great problem, as most of these sharks can't see. They have been blinded by parasites that hang from their eyes. The pinkish-white parasites, called copepods, attach themselves to the cornea of the eye. One theory is that the parasites dangling down from the eyes, act like lures to attract food. When the prey gets close, the shark inhales, 
and is able to suck food from one meter away. Poor manners, perhaps, but effective. We've done uh, a lot of diving over the last weeks, but on every dive with a Greenland shark, it, it was some sort of strange. In the first moment, this giant appears to be like, yeah, like a robot. There's almost no evidence that it is alive, but, but it is really special. It does not need to be quick to survive. It just needs to use its uh, senses to find the prey. And their senses are so special, so much more developed than ours. In addition to the five senses that humans have, sharks have a sixth sense. They can detect the tiny electric impulses emitted by the muscles of other animals. The sharks pick up these signals through small jelly-filled pores called ampullae of Lorenzini. They use this sense to locate prey in the water or hidden in the sand or mud on the seafloor. The Greenland shark is a scavenger who normally lives very deep, often going as deep as 400 to 600 meters. It has been spotted at 2,000 meters, but can also come up to the surface to pull in, for example, whale carcasses which have been stranded there. It's also called the sleeper shark. This is because his metabolism is very slow in order to save energy. He probably eats only every three to six months. The flesh of the Greenland shark contains high concentrations of urea and trimethylamine oxide, which is said to be intoxicating, inducing an alcoholic effect. For this reason, natives of Greenland are known to call someone who is drunk, shark sick. It's cold down there. After 32 dives in a 20-day period, Thomas and Mike's mission is completed. Aber hier unten zum Drehen ist perfekt. Ich war maximale Tiefe war ich. Dort, wo du warst, war ich vielleicht 14 Meter? Ja, ja, ja. Perfekt. Ja. Super Sicht. Ja, ja. Und easy rein und easy raus, ja, alles einfach. Ja. Thomas Bayrand and his team have been working with the Greenland shark for years. 
They have made so many interesting discoveries through their dives and close-up observations that they were previously unaware of. For me, it was a very special experience. I've never dived with anything so much unknown as the Greenland shark. We discovered only a tiny part of his life. Most of it remains down here, under the ice.